welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Today, my guest is Kobe Regev. He co-founded Please Foods, a plant-based cheese company. They named their plant-based cheese, Please, because their dream is to hear people order pizza with extra please. Stick around. I want to introduce them to you. Hi, Kobe. How are you? Hi, Nancy. I'm great. Thank you for inviting me today. Oh, I'm so excited to hear about your journey and to veganism, but I'm also excited to hear about please, cheese. So <laughs> let's start with your um, journey into veganism. Yeah, absolutely. And just uh, before we begin, I apologize. I have New York in the background. So if you hear a fire truck or something, it's just New York saying hi. It misses you. Um, but I miss it. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I can really imagine. Um, but to, to make a, a really long story short about our journey, um, we've been vegan, fully vegan for seven years now and about, thank you. And about seven years ago, my wife, um, who's my girlfriend at the time came home one day and she's just like, Kobe, you don't, you don't have to do this. And I'm like, Oh, what, what what's going, what, what is she going to ask me? Like, it's not, it's not for you. It's something for me. But I, I'm going to try a 22-day vegan challenge. But you don't, you don't have to. Don't, no pressure. Don't worry. And I was probably not the most supportive person at the time. I, I, you know, I, I was, I'm, I'm American. I'm a male. I uh, probably could have said nicer things. But I said, you know, the gist of it is uh, good for you. Uh, and thank you for not including me in, the, in that journey. Um, but the back of my mind was like, wow, that's actually kind of something magical that she's doing. Why am I being such a, um, I, I don't know what your audience is like, but why am I being like that? Let's say, let's say this. And uh, on day two of her challenge, she came home and I'm watching TV, like TV's right there. And she's over here on her laptop. And she's just watching some documentary and she caught me reading the captions in the corner of my eye. And she's like, aha, I knew you'd like this. And she threw it on the big screen. And it was a lecture by Gary Orofsky. And my hero. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and of course, you know, the, the like male ego side of me when, when he started lecturing and talking about the Holocaust, like all these things, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the one thing that kind of, connected with me and it, that got me to shut up was when, when he talked about TV and commercials and those are things I like and and he's like when you watch a com like you know commercials usually the first part of the commercial break is restaurants people eating animal products and all happy and, and, and living their best life and then the last part of the commercial break is people who need a prescription for heart medication or <laughs> for statins or for some, you know, something that has to do with health that got deteriorated from the diet that we mostly eat in North America. And at, like, as I'm listening to this, I had like the worst heartburn uh, going up and down my, my esophagus. And I went, and, and I was getting to that point in my life where I was like, oh, wow, I, I'm gonna need medication what do I do? And when I heard this, I was like, you know, maybe there's something here. And I decided to do the challenge with my wife. And somewhere in the middle, somebody asked me like, Oh, wow, Kobe, you're vegan now. Like, how does it feel? Do you have superpowers? Like, is there anything different about you? And I like had to think about it. I was like, I'm sleeping all night. Like I don't have I'm not tossing and turning. I'm not taking Tums or Alka Seltzer or whatever. And I, I was feeling great. And I think that was kind of my, intro, like, the, the opening of the door. And, and when you realize uh, what factory farming is like and the detriment of the environment and everything connected to it, it it's very hard to, to go back. And I remember, like, here and there, I'd have, like, in the beginning, I'd have, like, cheat meals, like, for a holiday or, like, a favorite restaurant or something like that. Even pizza was my cheat meal for a while. And I just, I couldn't. I couldn't anymore. Like I felt guilty and I, and my body couldn't, didn't want to process it. Uh, like I would take a bite out of pizza and I would just like, I'd feel really great for that first bite. And then I would feel horrible 
uh, right afterwards. So um, the way I kind of tell this story is that I'm the guy who would never be vegan. And now I'm vegan for seven years. I would never look back. A pre-vegan. A pre-vegan, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I, I was a pre-vegan uh, and now I'm, a, I'm vegan. I'm not, I, it, what is post-vegan? It's when we don't call it veganism anymore, right? It's just there you go. <laughs> <laughs> when the whole world is vegan. <laughs> yeah, we'll be post-vegan. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yeah. So talk to me about your idea to come up with Please Cheese. Well, thank you. Uh, so it's so it has to do with my roots, uh, our shared roots. Uh, I've been a New Yorker much longer than I've been vegan. And when we changed our diet, like I mentioned earlier, my biggest pain point was life without good pizza. And one day I was having lunch with my brother and he kind of just looked up from, I was having a salad and he looked up from his meal and he's like, what kind of New Yorker can live without pizza? What's wrong with you? And he was right. I, I, I really like took it to heart. And my wife, who I love so much, she was just like, you know what, we're going to show him. And she went to the supermarket. She bought the available plant-based cheese at the time. She, she got a pre-made dough and she made some sauce. And it was the ugliest pizza you ever seen in your life. But it tasted amazing because it had been so long since we had cheese. Did it look amazing? Not so much. And, and that was kind of my thing. I was like, well, it tastes right, but it doesn't look right. And that kind of put us on this journey. We, um, I mean, it's a long journey, but we really, we thought we were going to open our own pizzeria. Um, and it was at that pizzeria that um, when I realized how people were allergic to, to nuts, to soy, to all these different, to corn, to all these very specific allergens, I, I wanted to create a product that was very inclusive. And one of the reasons uh, it's called Please, other than plant cheese, uh, is, and, and you might be familiar with the stereotype, is that people outside of New York think we're rude for some reason. I don't, I, I, I don't know where that idea ever came from. What, happen, uh, what happens is, is that, you know, you're straight to the point. And other places I find sometimes they're not so, you know, they keep it inside. They're not really telling you exactly. And in New York, for me, being a New Yorker, mm -hmm. it's just like you're right there in your face and you could coexist with everyone. It doesn't matter. You could not agree on everything, but it's OK. Exactly. Exactly. But people like you said, people have this misconception of us and I grew up here so i know i every time i ask for something i'd say please and thank you and hold doors for people and like and, and that because when you live in a city with a lot of people you have to be civil but the conception outside like when people come here they're like oh look at these new yorkers they're going so fast and they're until you get out of the way and whatever and and so the idea a little bit behind please is just hearing kids asking for pizza with please on top or a burger with a little extra please and, and, and just, you know, influence the politeness uh, around the world uh, with this just really silly thing. And, and we came up with this idea before we had kids uh, and we launched, la not this Labor Day, the previous Labor Day in 2020. And my daughter, who was two at the time, after like a full day, we're just sitting at this pizzeria and like having slices and and she like after a full day of sitting around us she just went up to the counter and she's like can I get pizza please and I like I couldn't because we didn't influence her we never said that to her but she got it on her own and it was just like one of these magical moments <laughs> I love it and you know what I'm gonna do now you know how when you're taking a picture somebody everybody says say cheese from now on I'm gonna say let's just say let's please Yes, yes, exactly. That's what my my uh, my daughter will walk around with a like a a fake not a fake camera, but a camera that doesn't work, and she'll like take a fake picture, and she's and she's like, please, 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 and then uh, hands you the fake picture. It's the most adorable thing in the world. I love that whole concept of just um, kind of extending kindness, and you put it right into the name of your cheese. Um, Absolutely. It's I important. Think that is to me. Awesome. Now, is your cheese available? Where's your cheese available? 
So Where's we're please. We're, we're, please is uh, available mostly in New York City uh, in in uh, a bunch of pizzerias. Uh, we're at five right now. We're going to expand to ten, eventually twenty by the end of the year. Uh, and then we we're planning on expanding outside of New York City into tri-state area. Uh, actually, in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are focused primarily on food service, and and that's kind of for the non-vegan. Like vegans, they hear about cheese, they're going to run to the store and get it immediately. But for the non-vegans, being at the shelf, all the way in the back in the health section, they're never going to find it. They're not. They're never going to look for it. It's not something that they're going to be interested in. That's why they keep on moving the plant-based products in front, like in the supermarket to kind of figure out how to get that consumer. Uh, and with me, I'm like, what is the lowest barrier of entry? Get them a slice or get them a small pie. And once they get to experience it, you know, just by spending $2 extra than they normally would on a pie or a slice or whatever, uh, then they'll be hooked and understand it. And then when we're available, uh, nationwide and in supermarkets, they'll just they'll go looking for it. Uh, do you have any online ordering, or it's just like you said, it's just in the process? So right now, what we have online, and this is for everyone listening to to this conversation right now, uh, we have a section called for restaurants uh, on our on our website, and that's for restaurants. So if you have a favorite pizzeria and you wish they had a vegan option or a better vegan option, there is an opportunity for any restaurant to go to our website and just click in and we send them a free sample. Uh, I think it's like a two and a half pound bag so they can make a bunch of pizzas and then whoever instigated that, um, that order can come and try it and get their own uh, pizza. And we also have a campaign that we're running through Veg News. So I, I don't have it in front of me, but it's, it's like, uh, it's usually in the first three pages uh, and it's just an ad that you can physically take to a pizzeria so they can get their free sample. That is awesome. I will have information for your website and for getting in touch with you on our social media. And I'd like some cheese, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kobe. It was great talking to you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. I really appreciate it. Bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Remember to like us on Facebook, check out our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan.